Hello everybody. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. Whichever of those apply at this current point in time. 2007 Pontiac Grand Prix with a 5.3 liter V8, which is awesome. I'd love to have this car. Paragon. Very nice. Nice. Copyright. 118,948 miles. There is a, a few things going on with this particular Pontiac. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of it today. Uh, it is here for a power steering leak, uh, something about a, a crossover pipe, the, the steam pipe between cylinder heads on these V8s. Uh, that thing has some kind of a coolant leak. particular fan of front-wheel drive V8s, but this is still a pretty cool car. Powering down. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? We're looking at the front of our engine. We've got a new power steering pump. Looks pretty dry. This is uh, that crossover tube that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can see down there there's some kind of a repair done to it. That's kind of leaking. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh my god. Yeah, there's there's a leak somewhere. What is this? Ah, ah, there it is. There's some leakage. Ooh, that rack boot is uh torn up pretty bad. I wonder if that's leaking. Hmm. Well, side note, real quick, this has actual Alcoa forged wheels. That adds a layer of awesomeness. So I'm looking at this uh, torn power steering rack boot from the wheel well area and I, I can see some uh, some oil down inside of there also. Not a huge amount, but it's it's leaking from that seal in the rack. I'm, I'm actually gonna recommend replacing this rack as opposed to just replacing the boot. I, I can do just the boot, that's no worries, but uh, it's not gonna stop that little leak that's in there. However, uh, it looks like this power steering line is the primary offender for this leak right here. And it's going to run to the rack. I do believe that's the pressure line. That runs all the way over. Yeah, oh goodness, look, this side's leaking too. Yeah. Anyway, the, the line runs up and over and connects up into this area. And then it's going to continue and move back up to the pump. Alrighty, so here's how I'm going to digest this. Uh, I'm going to recommend we replace the power steering rack and pinion assembly, which is this uh, primary steering gear component right here. Uh, while that's removed, I'm also going to recommend that we replace the power steering pressure line because the line has leaks. We can see the fluid right here, but this rack also has leaks. You can see here, and we already touched on the leak on this side. So. A steering gear with the replacement line uh, will arrest the power steering fluid leaks. Now if we follow this line up we can see it runs under the belt uh, as it approaches the alternator and the power steering pulley. So let's get a look at that from the top side real quick. That's a very cramped engine compartment because they stuck a V8 in a V6 sized hole. Yeah we can see right here where the line comes up and then goes into the pump right right through there. This hose is the connection that goes to the reservoir and then I do believe that the return line comes up on the back side here, roots around and goes back into the reservoir. So my plan of action is as follows. Make the primary... What? Oh, it was full? What did you, you do? Smash it with a creeper and make it unfull? I said, no, 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 no. It was up to here. Oh yeah, well if you smash it all in with that, now it's not full. <laughs> yeah, see, this is not a full trash can now. You got like two more days left on this trash can. <laughs> Good job, buddy. It's like when your wife says take the trash out because it's full and then you just take the bag out of the can and now it's no longer full so it can stay there for a little bit longer. Okay, first things first, we're gonna go to both sides. We're gonna break the jam nut loose on the outer tie rod and uh, pull the tie rods out of the steering knuckles. The reason I'm going to break the jam nut loose first is so I don't have to like struggle with it. Once I get it out, it's on the ground. Yeah, that was easy. Wow, oh, looky there. Can't tell if that's a coat hanger or a cotter pin. 
yes. Easy peasy. Now I'm gonna need to let the subframe down some so I can get access above it just to make a bit more space so when I do get the steering gear unbolted I can slip it out through this opening. So we're just gonna pull the bolts out some, let this unit down. And for safety, I'll put a couple threads back. There we go. Same thing with the other side. So the uh, steering gear right here is held onto the subframe with uh, one mounting bolt right there and another one right there. Uh, now I'm not gonna be able to get to those because this uh, sway bar is in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, take the sway bar loose off of the subframe and uh, then I can have access to those bolts. Okay, so our well lubricated sway bar bracket is uh, bolted to the subframe from the top. So I'm gonna try to sneak in here with a 13 mil and get the bolts out. A good solid reverse click. That one I'm not so sure about. There. <laughs> yeah. Could have gotten in some trouble on that one. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. is actually uh, bigger than I thought. All that happened in the 10 minutes we've been parked here. That's a lot of leaks. Well, anyway, there's the bolts I need to get to. And on the back side, I think there's just a, a nut. Yep, 18 mil nut that holds it in. All right, I'm probably gonna have to just remove these manually. I don't think I can fit it, any, uh, any tools in there. Well, maybe I can. We'll see how this goes. Taking longer than I guesstimated. I'm shoving my tool in. And I don't care what the consequences are. Alright, I think that's one. Oh, I'm out of bolt. Look at that. Look at that. I don't have enough space. What? Come on. Maybe I can pull it down. Nope. Yeah. Really? Well, that's not fair. Yeah, no, I don't accept this. More pry bar. Ah. Pry hammer. Here. 
Now, now we're cooking with Cresco. Look at that. Gravity. All right, there's one. One more over here, and we're good. Bolt number two. It should be mostly free. Sure is. Yep. All right, it's free now. Good. Okie dokes. So uh, before I can uh, think about removing this unit, I need to disconnect the, uh, the lines. There's two lines up at the top, right there and right there. And then I've also got to disconnect the uh, steering column. These lines are fun. There's uh, like zero space in there to play with. Kind of like that AC compressor on the Ford. But I'll get it. Slowly but surely I will win this turtle race. Alright, there's one. I got one off. I'm going to get the one behind it. Alright, so uh, visual stimulation up here is rather limited due to uh, the darkness and the space, but I, I do have the second fitting loose and it is coming off. There it is, got her. See right there, got it. All right, next is steering shaft. And uh, then I can uh, maneuver this thing out and uh, we'll see what kind of shape it's really in. All right, let's go ahead and get into the wheel well here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And uh, we'll see what we can do about getting the shaft off. There's a little sleeve right here that covers up the universal joint. You know, push that up and uh, we can see the kill people bolt right there. That's the one that clamps the collar of the steering column down to the shaft. Do -do 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 -do. Phone's ringing! They're not listening. Hey guys, the phone's ringing. I don't know if you know. This is just getting out of hand, isn't it? The phone doesn't stop. Okay, we need an 11 millimeter on an extension to get that bolt out. Got it. Let me uh, break the torque real quick. Unclickage. Come out. Got it. All right, pry bar. I'm just gonna pry the collar up off of the shaft. See right there? Okay, steering column is now free from the rack. I think I'm gonna need to lower this subframe down some more. So it is going to need some more support. Lowering it down, I mean, I'll pull this bolt out and the other one over there. But I'm not doing that without something to hold it up because I'm not gonna die today. Well, not from that. I'm, man, I don't know, a meteor can hit me or whatever. But not gonna die over a Pontiac. Slut her down. Yep. Oh, all kinds of more space showing up here. Good. I should have done that to begin with. Thank you. Raise the rack up. See how much more space we can get. Oh, that's all kinds of room. Look at that. All right, that's probably good. All right, let's see about getting this guy out of here. Mm -hmm. Almost. Come on. I think the lines are hanging it up. Let me check the other side. I can't even see what it's stuck on. It must be the two fittings right there. I see one of them on that side. They must have moved here. There, now it's moved. Yeah, 
I'm out of there. It's dripping on my leg. Not good. again. Oh yeah, there's the carnage. Alright. Ruh -roh. It's a built-in power steering flush. Just throw some of that on there. Okay, what I want to do now is we're going to put one of these bolts back in and get this jack stand out of here. Then I can lower this car down and we're going to go ahead and finish up by pulling this line out, which runs way up to the pump up there. Safe. Coming down, all the way down. All right, this cover's gotta go away again. Let's get this out of here. And the power steering line comes up right through here. That's it right there. And it bolts to the pump right there. So uh, I think I can maybe get behind it and uh, get the line off without pulling the pulley off of the pump. Say that five times fast. Let's see, back to the 11 millimeter again. These are 11s, I don't know why. That's like the theme of this week. It's 11 millimeter week. Everything is 11. That's gotta go. 12 millimeters. can kind of not really many places to put it all right well right about here is as good as this is going to get as i take this apart and then take all the connectors off um looking back uh, at that power steering line there's no way i'm going to get that off without pulling the pump pulley off because the pulley is extending out past the uh the hex on the nut so i've got to pull the belt and pull the pulley and then I can replace uh, or remove that line. That's uh, that's what's up next. True, uh, first the belt's gotta go. So this was silly. I've got the uh, serpentine belt a little loose here. Problem is I had to do it with a pry bar. There, uh, there is an automatic spring-loaded tensioner down here, but the tensioner is back behind this part of the body and I couldn't get a tool on it. So I put a pry bar up under this pinch weld against a lip that's on the tensioner and just kind of pried the tensioner down and uh, that's enough to relieve tension so now I can uh, actually remove the belt. Good times. So with the left hand I'm actually reaching up pulling on that pry bar and it's working the tensioner giving me space. There. So let's just tuck that down here out of the way. I don't want to take it all the way off. No need but I do want it out of the way. Yeah, I don't. I just don't think there's any way I can I can get to that fastener without pulling this pulley off, so off it goes. Okay, so I've got a specialized tool here for just such an occasion. Little clamshell thing that slips over the pulley. That way. There's two sides of it, they slip over and they're gonna pull on it. And they're gonna pull on it by way of this, uh, oh, what do I wanna call this? Extractor? I don't know. All right, this is gonna grip onto right here and right here. And as you thread this in, this is gonna push against the stud on the pump and it's going to pull the pulley off of the pump. That's the idea anyway. Let's do it.
Don't worry about that battery. This is the negative terminal right here. It is safe. Move, it's gonna come right off. No problem. Here we go. That's the little fitting I needed to get to. Okay, I think I can just get that with a the crow's foot wrench since it's at this weird, goofy angle. Unclickage. There we go. That was easy. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, <laughs> oh no, you don't. I've had this thing for 20 years. You're not going anywhere. It's like the last of the craftsman tools back when craftsmen actually made tools. I'm not about to lose this. I will pull this engine out of this car to recover this tool. It's one of my originals. I bought this tool before I even had a use for that tool. All right, I think this uh, line is bolted on down below somewhere. Let's go back down there and find it. Again, I uh, hypothesized that the little clamp is right about there, uh, so I can't get it. I'm gonna let the subframe down again. Maybe I can get enough angle dangled generated to, uh, to put a socket on that thing. Okay, I can get to it now. Let's see, it is gonna be right. Yeah, you see it right there in front of you. There it is, that little strap right, right there. Yeah, one strap, one bolt, that's what's holding the line in. Uh, what is that, a 13 or something? I think that's the right one. It better be. Yeah, it looks like a 15. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, so I had to reach down a whole lot with an itty bitty little ratchet and, uh, and get that bolt out. I have it right here. I did not record it because there was no way I was going to get two hands and a ratchet and a socket and a flashlight and a GoPro uh, down in this little hole all by itself. So uh, I just had to get it done and fill you guys in afterwards. So uh, now that that's out of the way, let's uh, fish this line out and then we'll proceed with uh, sticking the new one in. Again, this is not doing things the way I want them. All right, moving back up some. So this line has a lot of bends in it up here at the area where the space is uh, the smallest. So I think I'm gonna pull, the, pull this line out this way and then feed it up and out. I, I think that's gonna work out best. And if it's not, I'll just chop it off and deal with the consequences of installation later. Okay. So we're gonna come out through the top. Come on out of there. I don't I don't wanna fight. I really don't. I'm not in the mood. There's so many bends in this line, I just can't get a good path to uh, extract it. Maybe if I twist it and go around. Yeah. How about if I rotate it from the bottom side and just kind of tug on it until it comes out? Let's try that. I've got the goofy weird part out. Here it comes. 
guys, don't let me forget the way this went back in, okay? So we were pointing up and away and doing this inverted. Okay. Dope's new line is here. Let's match it up and make sure it is correct. Um, looks like it. All the bends are similar. Good, 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 good. Yeah, this is correct. We just need to transfer this clamp over. Because I'll have to put that back on if this clamp does not go back on for this little grommet mount thing right here then the line will move and it's going to touch the belt and the belt will actually cut a hole through the line and uh, that would be bad we don't want that to happen so how did we do that the first time we were away from each other pointing away going up goofy angle got it okay it goes like this hey hey look at that it went in all right. And the other piece is, oh heck it's right. Look at that, it went right where it's supposed to go. That, I couldn't have done that any better if I tried. How about that? That's cool. All right. Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn the cam off. I'm gonna go down there and, uh, and attach that uh, little mount bracket thing with its bolt. Uh, like I said, you guys aren't gonna be able to see, so I'm not gonna report it. Check back in in a moment. Okay, I paused for a minute. I think I've got the, uh, the fastener started. Uh, I'm trying to get the cam in there to show you guys. I, I don't know if you can see, but you can see right in front of you, there's the uh, little bracket and the bolt is in it. So I'm just gonna go in some more with my fingies and uh, tighten that bolt down. This is uh, actually quite cumbersome. I can get it though. Yeah, right it's right there this bolt thing is kind of seriously in my way this would be easier to do with the engine out <laughs> yeah. just laughing at myself man I'm always all right what are you talking about one ratchet click at a time Oop. camera gravity Lost it. Lost my nut. Yes, sir. Nope, they're not. But they're just so used to dealing with things that nothing phases them anymore. So this is a cool tactic. I, I've got my middle finger on the socket, and then I've got my index finger here picking up the ratchet and I'm letting gravity work against the ratchet to rotate the socket. It's slow and tedious, but it's actually working. For once, gravity is on my team. All right, we're reaching tightness. I can feel it. Good. Okay, let's go ahead and secure the line to the pump. That way it does not get forgotten, because that would be bad. There we go. Whoa, give it back. We've been through this. Line clickage. All right. Okay, let's go back up. We've got the new steering gear right there. And I want to go ahead and slip that thing in, get it mounted up. Look at all that Exxon Valdez action. This thing was spilling everywhere. You go back into your home. You get back there. Under the wire, please. There we go. All right. All right, steering gear. Time to go home. Okay, I need to let this uh, subframe down ever so slightly again. So I'm going to put my support back where it goes. And then we'll take that bolt out again and let this thing come down. Well, that wasn't effective. Alright, 
right, here we go. Racks coming in. Oh, by the way, these things right here, those are removable. That is uh, there to protect the, the threads during shipping and transport and housing, etc. Oh, we're not gonna fight, are we? I didn't think we were. No, we're not gonna fight. We're gonna do what I want. Because the alternative is not gonna work out. It's not stuck on anything. What is this? Friction? Am I getting frictioned? Yeah. I am. There. down here on the lines again let's go ahead and pull the plugs out of the steering gear and uh, we'll go and uh, thread the lines into it there's one this one's kind of broke but I can get it out this line has a new o-ring on it it's the old line that was not changed the return line this is where short wrenches are a beautiful thing Wrong way. off the threads from the fitting so we can find the threads and then uh, start to screw in but the line is like sitting sideways if there's any kind of pressure on it the friction's too great and I can't uh, I can't turn the fitting with my fingies Doo -doo -doo. and so I moved the fitting around to create that momentary loss of friction and that allows me to uh, get a turn or two on the fastener right here pro tip Line clickage. Ugh, got it. All right, so we've nearly got these bolt holes lined up. Nearly. It's got to go over, and one side has to go down. The right side, that's still a little high up. Okay, I've got some pry welding pliers. We'll use those to just kind of force this thing over. A little bit more, there we go. Now we're in business. Yeah. I need more pry flyers. Okay, time to raise the subframe back up. I want to reconnect the steering shaft. We've got the bolt tight. The only thing that's loose still is uh, the sway bar. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's bolt this uh, sway bar down first because there's a little bit more space here. Good idea, Ray, good idea. Isn't that great how I can just like change my mind mid-sentence and just go do something else? <laughs> Uh, get in your hole. There you go. I've already done the other side. Did that while you guys weren't looking. Clickage. Whoa, you got hit with a ratchet. Doo -doo 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 -doo. A lot going on all of a sudden. 
Phone's ringing. Ratchets are clicking. Viewers are getting hit with stuff. Ah. There we go. Okay, now we can go and put this uh, subframe back up some more and then attach the uh, steering shaft. Back to the plan that I planned on having the first time I formulated a plan before I ruined my own plan. By being on the non-plan plan. Oh, there we go. Hey, how about that? Look at here. The collar got pretty close. Let's see, there's the hole. There's the relief for a hole. And then there's a flat right here, which corresponds to flats that are on the collar. But I, I still think I need to go up a little bit more. Yeah, I need to go up a lot more. The angles are uh, causing it to bind or whatever. More uppage. Uh -huh. yeah. Let's see if I got it now. How are we doing in there? You see, I got the, I got the collar kind of lined up. Just gonna pull it down now. Hang on, there's a flashlight on my face. Let me move that there. See that? Come on, a little more. Got it. You gotta make the gnaw sound. It gives you like superhuman strength. <laughs> Let's put our, put our bowl back in. Long range style. There we go, threaded, where's the ratchet? Yeah, that's my new ratchet, there we go. All right, let's pull this little shield thing back. It's not going to pull back. Okay, all right, let's lift the subframe back up until the shield goes over where it's supposed to. Let's just do that. Uh, same thing. Okay, moving back up. Actually, let's just move the rack down. There we go. Oops, I'm on the lock. Of course I'm on the lock. Safety. Oh, can't do this rolling around. There we go. Screw it in. Okay, second shaft, second hole. Bottomed out, we're good. Okay, subframe is secure. Hoses are secure. Sway bar is secure. Uh, the connector is connected, you guys didn't see that. Let's see, I got the steering column hooked up. Uh, now, now we have to go back up top and put the power steering pump on. Power steering pump, pulley. There we go, pulley, 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 that's what I said. All right, let's get this out of here and then we're gonna get out of here. Fun fact, cardboard makes a great floor cover. That way, when you're going to make a mess, you just pick it up and roll it away and throw it out. Okie dokes, it is now time to get the pulley back on. Uh, we're going to use the same tool that we used to extract it, but in a slightly different configuration. See, inside of that shaft, it is threaded. So I'm going to thread this adapter in. Then we're going to thread this device onto the adapter and then use the flat part of the flange here to press the pulley onto the shaft. Threads are a little boogered up though. Doesn't want to go in very easily. That's fine. There. Now it's got good threads.
Okay, so the tool is now bottomed out and the threads on the shaft. It's working. Yeah, the idea is to hold this threaded section stationary, turn this piece in, and then that will press it onto the shaft. However, that can cause the shaft to turn, and if the shaft turns, it just unthreads from the inside of the shaft. So you've often got to go back more than once and reconfigure the tool. Not a huge deal, but it's moderately inconvenient. See, now the shaft just turned, so it's unthreading the tool from the inside. Try it again. Oh yeah, we're good now. Full speed ahead, Cotton. And I think we're good right there. Yeah, it's flush. Let's go ahead and get this out of here. Uh-oh, parts of my tool are left behind. Whatever do I do? There. Yeah, this is turning into a sacrificial tool. Okay, I have the belt back on. You see that right here? Again, one of them situations where there was nothing to see except for like my arm. Electron clicks. starting to feel like this video is coming up on, on an hour. Well, hmm, that didn't work. I have an idea. I understand that many of you would like to see this intake manifold come off. And that you would like to, uh, to see me replace that steam slash crossover pipe. Uh, which I will do first thing in the morning. Because I'm doing it in the morning and not today, I'm just going to make that a second video. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it. So, having said that, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, I'm sorry. I can do nothing about that. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Click. Okay. Fluid's full, and you see no pump noise, no leak. Uh, no leak. This is good. Okay. I think we're all set here. Let's shut her down. See you guys later. Victory is mine. <laughs>